in the southeast, Darkin and accomplice set out to rob the Penthouse nightclub in Ilford in September 1988. It was supposed to be an easy job. Go in, grab the cash from the night's takings and leave quickly. What happened has gone down in the pages of criminal history. So what happened that night in Ilford? I bought out my head, said there's, a, there's a, about 25,000 or 30,000, which was quite a lot of money at the time. They said, all you've got to do is walk in and uh, wrap a couple of people up. We've got people in here, let you in the back door. I said, no problem. So um, I went up there, all rucksacked up. Because at the, at the, as you go up in the lift, you'd be met by doorman. And obviously, I went up with a rucksack on my back, with uh, my clothes in. I was put in a room, and uh, the fella said he was going to let me out with three three uh, knocks and obviously he let me out it was about it was a caribbean do he let me out it was about 120 probably i think it's 140 people was in the club when i come out which was supposed to be three people and right. it just turned into mayhem i was i was obviously i was chilling people left right center as i was laying them all down they thought it was a joke you know obviously i've got a big balaclava on and i'm saying this big tall black kid i'm going get on the floor and he's looking at me like that i went get on the floor and obviously i went bang he, and all of a sudden in the statements he says i see omar suddenly hit the floor you know and then obviously they realized it was real you know and i started obviously well done martial arts i kick run and kick some geezer in the chest and he flew back and and then um and i just said to my mate just rip the phones out and as, I, as i walked out the first thing i see is a bow tie so i hit him with an elbow he went straight down and then um, walked onto the dance floor, and then obviously the, the geezer with me decided to shout my first name out. Well, I thought he was ripping, ripping out the, the funds. Obviously, as I went like that, the geezer grabbed the gun. Who grabbed the gun? And, uh, the, the, gun then? the The nightclub owner. Oh, uh, the manager? Yeah, so it was. Um, no, so uh, I can't really say it was me or it was him, but he, he, he got shot. So. Uh, no, where, where was he shot? Apparently, went through his thumb. One for his arm, one in his stomach. So, but it wasn't intentionally. It wasn't like it was weren't done like blatantly to, to, to hurt him. Just in the struggle. In the struggle, what happened? Yeah. Dark's accomplice was also shot in the melee, and hearing the sirens of the first police vehicles arriving, he decided it was time for them to leave, and so he carried his partner down the stairs to the street. As I walked out, I was carrying him, and uh, I had him across my shoulder. So as I'm walking, I think, oh, we've got away with this. And all of a sudden, obviously, police cars, they go, that's some over there. So I just I picked the gun up, and they all sort of backed off. And I went, and the uh, cars were safe from me, uh, to say, back there. And I just said to them all back, or shouting out, go back, so all the police cars reversed back. And then uh, as they were reversing back, I went round the corner to get into the car. And then, uh, obviously, a police car pulled up in front of me, and that's... I went to take the police car, policeman out of the car, and um, as I went, I looked up and all the police cars were there, so I thought, I've got no option, so I put him back in the police car, put my mate in the police car, and that was off. So I went through Ilford about 100 miles an hour, Simon's going, so I just said to the copper, I'll put a gun in his neck, I said, look. Is the policeman driving you? Yeah? yeah, best rally driver I've ever had. <laughs> No, no, there, does he? No, no, <laughs> no, but he was a fucking good driver, too. He, uh, he was, oh, serious, I ain't joking. He, I mean, he, he was fucking motoring through seven, he was going through red traffic lights, went up around the bouts. Obviously, I'm, I'm surprised that he was like, so anyways, so. I, what was you saying to the policeman? I just put a gun in his neck, I said to him, tell him to back off. So, uh, obviously, I could see all the signs, it was, going, it was going 100 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, there was a big bang. And it just missed his head and blew the window out. But well, the gun went off? Yeah, it went off and blew the wind. Not intentionally, blew the window out. So he really thinks that I've done it for purpose. So obviously now he's turned into a super, he's like Lewis Hamilton. Eventually they were able to get some distance between themselves and the police chasing them. And they pulled up in a residential street to change getaway cars. I went to the front door and this Irishman comes to the to the to the uh, to the door. But he just banged, went to random ass and banged the door. Yeah, so I put the gun in the back of the policeman's back. I said, tell him you want his car. So the policeman was saying to the Irishman, I want your car. And being a typical Irishman, he's going, What are you talking about? What what do you want my car for? 
And I went, just give him the fucking car. Anyway, so he went and got his keys, come back out. So he's, he's, he's looked, and the copper, instead of going, sort of taking the keys, I had two guns. So he went to give me the keys. Well, he, I can't take two, uh, well, two handguns, two 38s, or like that. Sort of like that, two 38s. And he's looked at me, the Irishman, I've looked at him, and I didn't realise he's only got his underpants on, which was quite funny, right? So I said, you're coming along, mate. So, so, the, uh, so the Irishman said, uh, who, me? I went, yeah, you, come in. I grabbed him, he had a vest on, and he's under the pants, poor bastard. <laughs> so I've got a policeman, an Irishman, a shop man and myself. Then we're off again. So uh, all of a sudden, he's going left, right, and I didn't know where I was. So the person with me, He's going, Vic, Vic, I've been shot. I told him to shut up. So then he's going like that with his fingers. So we're doing about 80 miles an hour, and we decide we hit a wall. So, we so the car was, like, smashed up like that. So he's jumped out, the policeman. I looked at him and went, go on, fuck off, cos I don't need him no more. I see a couple of police cars in front of me, sort of all come up, load of police cars. So I looked round like that, and I looked, I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll take another police car. You can see in the depositions, I ain't bullshitting, so I started running like that. And I, was, I could see all the coppers' faces looking in the police cars. They was all looking at me like that. And they must have, and they was going, this geezer's run at me with two handguns. And obviously, I was like that. And they, I went, shot at them. And they fucking went, Poosh. just They started going everywhere then. So I couldn't catch the police cars. So I turned round, went back, and there was a... I shouldn't make a joke of it. It was a Chinaman. And it, it was like, what, you call Chinese takeaway, so... <laughs> So anyway, so I walked up, put the gun to the and said, I said, get in. And, he, and uh, there's a bird, right? His bird's going, I want to come. I went, fuck off, you ain't getting in the car. So I get so him, he throws him in the car. It's like, it was like saying, I have a, it's fucking mad. So the bird's, I've got my foot, and I'm pushing this fucking bird out, trying to get in the car. She's trying to get in the car. I've took her old man hostage, and she's trying to get in the car with me. So I'm, get, I'm getting my foot and pushing her out of the fucking car, cos I don't want to take her hostage. Anyway, so the geezer chucks him in the back. He gets to the safe house. So I throws him. So what I've done, I, throw the, I remember throwing the door open like that, because obviously all the cars were behind us. I didn't want to know where, where he got out. So also I stopped. He ran out, ran into an house, which was a safe house. And I just kept on going. And then after that, I kept throwing the door open, kept throwing the door open, kept throwing the door. And then I realised it was like a big snake. Like I was about, I must have picked up about 10, 15 police cars maybe more, and I knew it's a matter of time before I'm going to walk into a roadblock and obviously they're going to try and iron me out, so I ain't stupid. And um, so I thought, so what, what, what do I do next? Dark eventually took refuge in an open field where he hoped he could lie undetected until things quietened down. But freezing cold and wet with hypothermia setting in, he was unable to remain hidden any longer, and so he made a run for it across the field and was arrested. And there the events of the day should have ended, but they didn't. I get Nick, take me back to the police station, so I thought, fuck it, I'm gonna get out of this, I ain't gonna stay here. So they moved me quick in a van. So I get charged, get put, go to court, put in a, in a prison van, like a protective van, and it had a big net on it. And, and, and at the time, it was a racket cover, and I thought, how the fuck can I get this off? And I just went like that. I thought I'd done it. At the time, I was a lot stronger than I was now. And I went like that, and it went ting. I couldn't believe it, it just went fell through. But now I've got the metal side of the van. I've got two years for this, two years concurrent. I was sitting there like that, and I've waited, and the three cop was in the front, and I, I didn't realise they had police cars behind me. And I jumped up, ripped the side of the van off. I've got the paperwork there, you can see it, I ain't lying. So I ripped the side of the van off, and they couldn't believe it. The cop was sort of looked around like that and I'll fucking rip the side of the van off. I don't even done it. I just rip the side of the van off and uh, and we had done martial arts, there was about a window like that. I kicked that out, that went out. So I thought, fuck it. So but the only problem we were small, we'll try to get through like that. So I got halfway out and this cop has run up, jumped out, so I grabbed him with one arm round the neck, and he's screaming, and the other one, I grabbed him by the uniform, and as they were straight around, they started pulling me out of the van. All of a sudden I went, <coughs> I went, you move, I'll blow your fucking head off. Obviously, well, I didn't know, they put a big gun in me head like that. I went, ah! So the dirty bastards fed me back through the van, right? Fucking put me down. I ended up in the, in the West End Central uh, police station. 
then that was it. I was straight double A cat and I looked like a canary for the next 10 years. After 19 years inside as a high-risk double cat A inmate, Vic Dark was eventually released and met at the prison gates by his brother. And I remember sitting there and I was in the reception and uh, I went, and I didn't want to ask the screws because I kept going, you know, I'm thinking to myself, he's going to be, he's going to be, and all of a sudden I heard the screw walk and go, fucking hell, you see that big Bentley turn up outside, a Bentley Vizou, and I knew it was my brother's, and I thought, yes. <laughs> so I walked outside, got a big bottle of champagne, give it all that, yeah. You know what I mean? One of those ones. You see them all looking out the window going, you flash cunt. You know what I mean? But what a nice, what a nice way to come out, you know. And uh, talk about rubbing it in, the, in, the old, in their faces, you know. But I remember the screw walking and going, fucking great big Bentley out there, convertible. I ain't never seen nothing like it. It was my brother, wasn't it? I thought, well, yeah, I've arrived, you know. The upsurge in armed robbery 